As you have had success finding or helping starting pitchers find their groove, have you noticed an approach, a different approach, more aggressive approach from players, their representation, and trying to come to Pittsburgh and, and take advantage of what's going on here? Yes and no. Um, there's been an aggressive approach by clubs to counter that with dollars. Um, and there are some guys that, that we uh, felt like we could have great fits for, but that have, uh, uh, over the last couple of years, got a lot more dollars than, than maybe we would have been comfortable with. Um, there are absolute players that, that, uh, and agents that want to bring their players here because of uh, you know, the Ray Searage success and, and Jim Benedict and, and our strength and conditioning staff and our catchers and our advanced guys. And, uh, I mean, you start running out A.J. Burnett, Francisco Liriano, Edison Volquez, and Jay Happ as starters alone before you get into Hanrahan, Melanson. Um, I'm missing guys, but uh, uh, that we've helped bounce back. Um, I know if I were a pitcher, I, I, I'd be paying us to come pitch here <laughs> because the return on the investment is significant. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, and uh, we haven't found that player yet. Is there uh, any other drawback to that? Maybe players looking at this as uh, a one-year deal and then trying to parlay that into something? Is that something you have to take into account as well when you're looking at these guys? It's, there are some pitchers and some players that are comfortable with what they are going to be able to accomplish on a one-year deal and feel like they're going to go out and have a very good year, a platform year, and establish themselves as, as whether it's their third consecutive good year, or their second consecutive good year, their bounce back good year, um, and then turn that into a, a significant contract. And, and uh, again, there are some guys that are very interested and, and we're working through some of those options right now. Uh, there are other guys that, that you'd think would be very interested that for whatever variety of reasons they've, they've chosen to either stay elsewhere or don't have that type of interest that, uh, that uh, we would think they, we would hope they would or, or you might think they would. Neil, you, you signed Liriano to a club record free agent deal last offseason. Do you have the ability to top that, be in that neighborhood again for starting pitcher and other needs? Or would you have to clear more salary to, to do that? Um, as we've talked about, we'll, we'll we will utilize whatever flexibility we have, and, and uh, uh, there's no bar set on what we can or can't do in terms of a, a max. Uh, it, it comes back to the right player, the right deal, and the right situation, right fit. What's John how? how far along is he in the process? I and mean, we've seen videos, and he seems to be doing pretty well, <laughs> given his distance yeah. from the injury. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> hopefully it's the video on the, on the, on the uh, treadmill and not the other video. Um, but uh, no, he, he's, he's progressing really well. Um, again, I feel like I say the same thing every time we talk about a rehab that's going well. He's checking all the boxes. Um, as you saw the other day, partial weight bearing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he is. He, he's starting to, uh, to begin normal activity again. And the next step is, is the full weight bearing. And we're hoping that's that will be as successful as the, as the advancement to partial weight bearing is. And we continue to remain optimistic that he will help us early in the season. What day, don't know. Um, we'll see how far deconditioned the overall body gets. And we've been aggressive trying to keep the rest of the body uh, as conditioned as we can. But there will be some natural deconditioning that occurs. Um, and, and then how quickly we can get the baseball activity going again. But uh, we're very optimistic that he's going to help us early in the season. Is he rehabbing okay. in Pittsburgh still? Or is he moved he is in Bradenton now. Okay. I like how he's incorporated the water slide. It's very advanced. It's a new technology. You guys are always pushing me off. Yeah. Me. <laughs> it, it, it's a new form of the swim mats. <laughs> hey, if, uh, if you were to move Walker, whether it be during these meetings or, or later this, this offseason, would you have in-house replacement? Are you confident that maybe someone like a Hanson or, or, or Josh can be an everyday second baseman? Well, um, whenever you consider moving a player, Again, any player speaking generically, you do. You, you think about what you have internally to uh, to backfill for that player. And try to be careful replacing. Uh, it's hard to replace really good players sometimes. As we, we didn't talk about Cervelli replacing Martin a year ago, we talked about Cervelli backfilling, and then we utilized those dollars elsewhere to help our club get better. Um, and, and as we look at the guys that, that are on expiring contracts uh, that may not be with us in 2017, what does it mean to the 2016 club if we were to move one or two or none of them? Mm -hmm. And uh, as we look forward, we, we have some infielders that we like, multiple infielders that we like, and, and Josh certainly has shown more than enough ability to play second, to play third. Uh, Gong has shown the ability to play third and, and to play short. Jordy can bounce all over the infield. Um, there's a free agent market. There's a trade market. Um, 
so we feel comfortable in in our ability to backfill for most of the players that we have on expiring contracts. A lot of the the, the national guys and coaches and, and watching them uh, seem pretty confident, saying that that you could put plug Josh Harrison. I'm not Josh Harrison. Josh Bell in at first base in June and, and just let him go. Where do you see his development at this point? We love what he's done with the bat. Um, he's a very good hitter that is developing power, has tremendous raw power, um, uh, and, and people that, that uh, forget what it used to be 20 years ago, power is the last thing to develop. Um, for some bizarre and strange reasons, power developed very quickly for about a 15 year stretch. Um, <laughs> Hot, yeah. And in Josh's case, uh, he commands his own, he can barrel the baseball really well. Um, and, and has the tremendous raw power and is kind of that old school guy that the power will come but he needs to hit first. Defense it continues to be a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. He reminds us that uh, when you play very far away from the baseball for the majority of your life, when you get much closer to the baseball, the game really speeds up and then it's going to get even faster for him at the major league level. We love the work he's doing. Um, last season he's doing some work again this off season. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll continue to work at it. Um, if there's a young man that's going to work himself into being a good first baseman, it's Josh Bell. I mean, this guy's driven, he's smart, um, he's athletic, and, and he's working at it. And to be where we are at the end of one year at the position, very positive. Um, not going to put a time frame on him, um, but, but there's a lot of really good things happening with Josh. And, and again, the defense still continues to be a challenge, but he's, he's made tremendous strides. You know, it's Kutch having a normal offseason. I know he was bothered at times by, by knee problems last year. It's, is anything different with his training or anything like that? Um, probably a better question to ask him this weekend when, when, uh, when he's in for uh, Pirate Fest. But uh, from everything okay, we've got from, from our offseason, yeah, yeah, from our offseason checkpoints yeah. with him, he's had a good offseason and, and uh, um, has gone through the offseason as a baseball player. Uh, took some downtime to, to let the knee um, settle, and, and everything seems positive at this point. He had a couple guys actually who, I mean, Jordy had the, had the, the leg thing going. Yeah, his, 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 you know, when you check in with him, is he good to go? Anybody need any additional cleaning up procedures or anything this, this winter? Not that I can think of off the top of my head right now, but mm -hmm. catch me a break. And there's a lot going through this <laughs> yeah. whole mind well, Nothing right jumped out of the same. Nothing jumped out of the same. Conversation, but no, nothing, nothing that jumps out at me right now. So. Does the fact that you guys won 98 games last year and have pretty much the same position player core back. It looks like it's going to be a good squad again. Affect what you guys do with your 2017 free agents? I mean, understand well, you're planning ahead, but you got a, got a window here with what could be a pretty good roster. Sure, and that's, I mean, our goal is, from the day we got here, was to be a, play meaningful baseball in September, play off baseball in October as consistently and as frequently as we can. And that doesn't change as we look to put together 2016 because we think we have a large number of good players coming together for 2017. Um, we want to win a division in 2016, and, and uh, we do have a good core in, in place. How do we best supplement it um, while we keep in mind the future? And that's always the delicate balance that small markets walk is you always have to keep one eye on the future. And um, uh, we won 98 games. Um, did a lot of very good things. We have more things that we have to do to accomplish to take those next steps. And uh, as we go through the off season, as we from the day the season ended abruptly and painfully, um, we've worked hard to, to, to make sure that we put this club in a position to continue to fulfill our goal and, and our commitment. That, uh, and that's again playoff baseball in October as consistently and frequently as we possibly can. Why do you feel that the Baseball America decided to give you guys the organization of the year? What do you feel? That, uh, that you've accomplished uh, since you got here? Well, sitting at the uh, um, minor league awards luncheon today, to, to, as, as it was introduced, uh, John Manuel talked about um, three consecutive years, uh, the, the level of success that, that we've, that we've uh, put on the field regular season, uh, postseason shortcomings notwithstanding, um, the distance in which we traveled, uh, and the fact that, that we are a well-rounded organization that relies upon Area scouts, professional scouts, international scouts. It relies upon our player development staff. It relies upon our major league staff, our strength and conditioning coaches, our trainers, um, our analysts, really good guys in the front office, and, and that we are a well-rounded organization that has uh, acquired players and developed players on, on basically every front that you can imagine. And that's what we're going to need to continue to do to, to uh, be in a position to win a division and uh, maybe 
be in a position to win that type of honor again. But uh, incredibly humbling, um, an amazing honor to, to get from um, kind of one of the, the places to go if you're looking for information on baseball. And, and uh, those guys have been around a long time. And to be mentioned in the Cardinals and, and Royals class as, as uh, the last couple of winners, we have a lot of work to do. Um, but it is a positive sign that we've done some good things. Do you feel the industry is starting to value more of the, I guess, holistic uh, approach to team building? You talked about finding value in different spots, different countries, and some of the signings you made. Help, yeah, sure. Hope that not. type of deal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's just, let's just let them just go in one area. Um, no, I, I think every team has to, they have to work to find young players to, to plug into their club because it, it, it balances payroll. Um, you, you, you need to find players through the draft. You need to find players through the international. You can find small bets in, in minor league free agents or, or roster uh, waiver claims, uh, bottom end roster decisions. Um, small market teams just have to do it more aggressively and, and be more successful at it. And, and, and uh, because of the group that's in that room next door, we've, we've, we've had some success at this point in time. We believe we'll be able to, to replicate it and continue to go forward. How much more difficult is it to do all that? Because that group's a little different than it was you know, six, seven years ago when you guys started out. Not only is, are the demands, you, know, you got to keep winning, people expect now the playoffs, but you're doing it with a group that you've been, you've been robbed a little bit, some people come in and taking some of that talent away. Yeah, on, on the positive, it's a, it's a much larger group because of Bob and Frank and their support and allowing us to, to continue to grow our staff. Um, again, on all fronts, um, we've, we've invested a ton of money on, on growing our staff. We've invested a ton of money in developing our staff. And, and as a result, when we do get hit, uh, we have worked hard to have someone in place ready to step up, or we um, absorb the, the responsibilities on other uh, on, on other people's shoulders. Um, but that's a, a part of what we're here to do. We're here to, to help Mark Delpiano get that next opportunity. We're here to help Jeff Bannister mm -hmm. get that next opportunity, or Jim Benedict, or um, somebody who has a chance to go become a strength and conditioning coordinator. Uh, it's what we're here to do, and, and, and we take a ton of pride in that. Um, as a result, hopefully people want to come work for, for us because they recognize that uh, they'll get an opportunity to continue to advance and, and they'll get a ton of time, energy, resources put into their personal professional development. Do you guys finalize the coaching staff for next year? Is there any changes? The major league staff will return um, intact. Uh, we do have, uh, Houston announced Jeremiah, right? I never even saw him. Yes, yes. We do have the physical therapist, Jeremiah Randall became the Astros head trainer. We've got a physical therapist position that we're working with. Him. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you, Yoshi. Was Yoshi. Yeah. Yoshi. Yeah. Latin American coordinator slash assistant major league strength coach. Uh, <laughs> yeah. was an official title, but he's around a lot. And helped us a lot. So, and, and again, yeah, you, you see Jeremiah get the opportunity. You see Kiyoshi get the opportunity. And, and it, it's tremendous. It, it is. It's, it's, uh, it's a big part of what we're here to do. It's hard from a professional standpoint to, to lose somebody, and, and that's where we create the opportunity. And, and need people to continue to step forward, but from a personal standpoint, we celebrate their success and, and wish them all the best, except for when they're competing against us. In the uh, the hiring of, of Chris Johnson, did you feel that performance was uh, that area that you, you wanted to emphasize and, and try to, to maximize? Was that uh, part of the reasoning behind that? Yeah, Chris brings an incredible background. Um, he's seen a lot, he's done a lot, uh, he's led a lot. Um, and in our minds, he will help us take what we call a performance team, and that's the strength and conditioning coaches, um, the athletic trainers, the mental skills coaches, uh, and will help us to um, have a consistent, solid, cohesive foundation from top to bottom across what typically are different departments. Mm -hmm. um, and we felt Chris would, uh, I mean, Kyle's done a, a, Kyle Stark's done a tremendous job of building the foundation. Uh, but our belief was that, that Chris will continue to build upon that and allow us to take even larger steps forward.